Good morning, Pink Girly here. Videotaping from the East Coast. It's March here now, and it's cold and windy out, but it is a beautiful sunny day, and that's always a good thing. So uh, this is part two of my Graphic 45 Seasons mini journal memory book that, that I'm building. And uh, for this video, I'm going to try to um, finish up the right-hand side pages of the book. I've already made some um, creative decisions um, and changed a few things from video part one. Um, I only had a small pad of paper from graphic 45 this seasons and I made my pages kind of large and with wanting to do some flip ups and fold out things um, on the right hand side pages of the book um, I really don't have enough paper so I'm combining some paper that I had of graphic 45 from some other um, I call them palettes paper palettes other other design books and um, they coordinate okay and I think I think it's going to be good so I went through and I did um, ink my edges and uh, work out a few things so mostly this video will be um, putting those pages together and then I'm hoping to show you how I put my spine together and then put my pages on the spine and then hopefully uh, in video three uh, we'll do the cover, and then uh, possibly video four, we'll go through and, and decorate and embellish the pages. Um, I just wanted to say, I haven't really been scrapping that long. I've only been doing this about five or six years, and um, without going into a lot of detail, I followed two girls online when I when I discovered this type of scrapbooking. I, years ago, did some 12 by 12 um, and a 12 by 12 album for my parents 50th wedding anniversary and uh, really I like most crafts but really that did not draw me in and so when I discovered these smaller books and making your own covers um, I was all in and I started to follow at that time two girls online One's name is Claire. I think she, you might say it's Charville, C-H-A-R-V-I-L-L. -L. She's in the UK, and I believe her blog is uh, mycreativespiritblogspot.com or something like that. And then I also watched a lot of Ginger uh, from My Sister's Scrapper and got a lot of um, ideas and tips from those two ladies. And so I wanted to give a little shout out to them because that's really how I got hooked on on doing this kind of scrapping all right so from the first video um this is going to be our my um I keep saying R like you're here with me I, I'm sorry I just I don't know why I do that but I still um need my inside cover and some of the paper that I added um to this book is from um graphic 45 from the children's hour and it's um, the back side, I would say, of um, those designs. And um, I really, they have, I have this in a couple different colors. So I have it in red, green, blue, and I have a brown. And I like that little flowery, leafy pattern. And I think it'll work well with this book. And that'll give me some additional paper to use. I also had some plain um, graphic 45 in um, a darker um, kind of um, pumpkin-y, orangey color. And then a lighter peachy color that, that I can use for some backgrounds. You'll see as we go through. And I'm going to incorporate that to give me a little more wiggle room with my paper. I did do one mat um, and showed you that on the, the uh, video part one and I've 
rethought that and redid that mat and um because I added this other paper, I kind of wanted to coordinate my mats. So I'll go over all that as we go through. Hopefully I'll remember. So I haven't decided because I don't have my cover made yet. And I don't know what I want my first page here to be. Because I wanted to coordinate it with my inside cover. So I've just picked out a few things that I think I'm going to work with. But we're going to just go past that. And then in um, part one we put together our envelope uh, pages that will be our pockets and then I went through and I finished the left hand side page of my book maybe I should zoom out a little bit I'm not sure you can see me totally and um, so I went ahead and I inked all my edges and I put those left hand side pages together and then I went through and kind of got an idea of what I want to do on the right hand side of my pages. Haven't glued anything down. I'll mostly be using the Mod Podge um, <clears throat> for a couple of reasons. It's um, less expensive than your paper tape and your tape roller or your um, score tape. It gives you a little more um, what I call wiggle room or time to readjust should you stick something down and change your mind or not get it quite right. And um, when you're making pockets, if you use the dry uh, runner tape, the experts say it doesn't dry completely. And so then when you slip in your cards or any memorabilia you have, the possibility of your card sticking inside your pocket so they always recommend that you use a wet glue when you're building pockets and whatnot so I think I've inked all my pages although now I'm looking at this one I'm not sure this one yeah this one's not inked so we'll go ahead and do that so <clears throat> we're starting out I've got my spring page here on the left hand side And then I'm going to work on the right-hand side of the book mostly. So I'm going to put my other pages off to the side. I'm running out of room here. If you could see my craft room, you would be appalled. I have stuff everywhere. So like I said, I had built that mat on video one, if, you've, if you joined me for that, which looked like this. And then I decided to incorporate that other paper design from Graphic 45 because it finally occurred to me that I didn't have enough paper. So I didn't want to waste this, so I am decided to use a portion of this um, for this page to make my flip up. which is going to go like this. And then, of course, on the back side, I had my parchment paper, which can be used to either put more pictures or you could do some journaling there. So the first thing I want to do is I see that I didn't ink this page. And I put all my things aside here. Here we go. I like to ink on top of something so that I don't... Um, well, I, I don't have to clean up my my work mat. Nothing really sticks to it, but you have to clean it up. So I'm using um, this Distress Ink by Tim Holtz called Gathered Twigs. And you want to come up, off from the side of your piece and just use a circular motion. I'm using an inking tool. This sponge is removable, so you can have them for different colors. A different um, inks that you might have in your supplies. Now the reason I didn't put all these pieces down on my pages is because if you're going to put little pages or additions or flip ups or fold outs, I like to hide the little tabs that you, you um, add in there. And I'm just sitting here thinking, eh, I don't think I have my magnet. I didn't pull my magnets out. I'm not sure if I can find them real quick. 
So let's see here. So this is my solid black sheet that I had pre-cut. And that's going to go in my white envelope. And uh, I inked all my edges of my white envelope. In uh, part one, we talked about um, my not liking that white. And then I did go in and I put um, some parchment paper and some pattern paper inside my pocket so I don't see that white. And the idea for this page is that this will be my base. I'm going to attach, I took a piece of cardstock, black cardstock, and I squirted it about a half inch. And then I'm going to glue this on. This will get tucked behind here before I glue that. Okay. And then I'm going to make a pocket at the bottom. This will flip up. This is just going to be a pocket. And then I'll put some kind of, when we go through and decorate and embellish the book, I'll, I'll put something on here. Unless something, you know, pops up quickly. Well, we can do a belly band or do it, you know, do whatever. So that's the basic idea for this page. So as I was working um, this out in my mind and cutting the pieces earlier, I decided I didn't like this raw edge here. Now, normally, I would have hidden this piece of black cardstock and glued, you know, this piece of um, parchment on top of it. But because this was a mat that I, I made originally and then decided not to use and I don't want to waste the paper, I don't have that option. This is already glued down. But I don't really like this raw edge. Now I inked it and it looks okay, but I'm thinking I want to come over the top with this and glue it this way and then decorate across the top. Put some words or something um, across the top. Because if I don't do that and I glue it this way like I normally would, I'd have to put something across there anyway. I don't want to bulk up the pages too much. I mean you could put a piece of lace or something like that down. But I'm not sure that I'm real crazy about this idea either. But see, I have a lot of um, other pieces that come with this um, paper pack. And I cut all my little... Um, like the little cards and whatnot that come with it. Of course, I've got a pile of stuff over here. And I'm not finding my... Well, I'll just pull out. Each um, season has decorative pieces that come with a paper pack that I've already cut these all apart. So I really could take... Now, this happens to be for autumn. But you'll get the idea of what I mean, because I don't know where my spring is. I can put something like this on top and decorate it. So I think that's the way we're going to go. I mean, really. It's a half a dozen of one, half a dozen of the other. So then all I'm going to do is, although I should really find my other pieces so that I can appropriately... I save everything. I have so many little bits of paper. I have boxes and boxes of scraps of paper. I have a hard time parting with, with a lot of stuff. But a lot of it comes in handy. And so I have a whole bag of black 
cardstock bits. And I used a lot of that to help build um, these pages. And here's all my scraps. So let's just see. Now on the back of um, this particular, a lot of the Graphic 45 tablets um, have a lot of different variety. This was a smaller pack. It's seasonal. It's got the four seasons in it. You didn't have a whole lot of variants. And on, on the back side, you had a pattern um, paper for each season. And then you had another sheet that was um, like this had a pattern on the back side but then also had where you can cut out all these different cards and things you can use to decorate your project so I have a lot of these bits from cutting that stuff apart that I can use to decorate of course I'm not seeing any spring well, there's a piece of spring, but that's really thin. Mm, I think this one's summer. So we'll put that up and out of the way. And like I said, I used some of this for um, the inside to cover that white inside of my envelope. I really kind of am liking this. Now, mostly what I do is I try to have at least a quarter inch of the black um, background showing. And like I said in my previous videos, I'm really not good with numbers. I'm not a numbers person. So I kind of tend to do things the hard way. So you're probably much better at it than I am. But I just kind of, sometimes I eyeball, and sometimes I do measure. So I'm going to put my big sheet aside. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down this onto my, my flap. The other thing I like to do is when I'm doing this type of work, I like to corner my edges and just snip off a little bit. And that just allows you to um, not have any overhang. It just seems to finish it off um, nicer and give you a nicer finish. Now this top edge I did not ink because, like I said, that was part of my um, mat that I made originally. So I want to make sure I ink that. Just trying to remember everything here. So I'm going to put some glue on here and we're going to get started. And I'm trying in my mind, trying to remember where I last saw my magnets because I may want to. Well, this is kind of thick. Maybe I won't do a magnet. It's be heavy enough to stay weighted down. So you're just going to kind of eyeball that and put that where you want. And give that a good press. Hold that down for a few minutes. Now this is going to get sandwiched and glued to this. And that's going to fold down like so and then that's going to get glued on to this and then onto the envelope now at the bottom of this page I want to have a pocket and I usually like to put some kind of a little um, cutout shape so when you're putting tags in you have a little divot kind of thing I just I like the way it looks and it makes sense to me so this is going to be a pocket 
So I want to decide where I want that. I'm going to put this on top. Now you can make this a pocket too and not glue this totally down. Uh, but I think I have enough going on on this page, so I'm not going to do that here. Of course, I'm having trouble with my my glue again. I have a couple of these laying around. I should have gotten a few other ones. Had them handy. Oh, that's better. So we're going to glue this down. I'm just going to eyeball it where I want. And a lot of times your glue might squish out, so you want to just be careful about that and not work on top of your good paper. So we're just going to put that down. See, and then I'm thinking something decorative. That would be cute, a cute belly band. I think this is from the, the summer collection. I think I do have a piece of spring here. Yeah. So I'm going to just cut a strip of this off. I think I'm just going to put a little belly band on that. I'm just going to make it... Uh, an inch and a quarter. And then I don't want it as long as this piece. Although having it a little longer does look kind of cute, doesn't it? See here I missed some glue, so I'm going to put a little more glue there. Miss that corner. I try not to get, sometimes I get a little too messy, like that there, there, and I squish the glue out. I had some stuff um, for sale on my, in my Etsy shop, and uh, one, one gal questioned me as far as, you know, why it looks shiny in some places and not in others, and she was exactly right. Um, so... You just want to try to be careful and not have too much glue shoot out. And I think I'm going to go with it smaller. So I'm going to take a little bit off of each end of this band. Now when I first started scrapbooking, I had no idea what people meant by a belly band. And it's just a strip of paper. You glue the two outside edges and it gives you a place where you can um, tuck cards or memorabilia. And I want to, of course, ink this. So I'm going to do my edges. So you just do get that to where you like it. So I'm going to put a glue on the left end, and I'm going to put some glue on the right end. And that looks good. So I'm just going to put that down and press. And then when I have my spring paper pack, there's probably a little something inside. It looks like I got that a little crooked. I think it moved a little bit. So make sure you get that, you know, right where you want it. And these are all my cutouts from the spring page. There's all kinds of stuff in here. That's his happiness, and then that doesn't stand out very much. But I kind of like that. So what I've discovered from watching those gals on YouTube, it makes a big difference 
and I probably should have done it with the belly band and I didn't when you put something on black and it just makes it pop out so I'm going to ink my edges and I'm going to glue this on a piece of black cardstock Now I don't cut too well with the scissors. I don't usually do too great and go and cut too straight. So I usually cut everything that I can on my trimmer. But I'm just gonna eyeball this, but I am gonna use my trimmer. I tend to be very anal about straight lines and whatnot. Some people are really good using a pair of scissors. Um, I do have two pair of the Tim Holtz scissors, and they're absolutely wonderful. And you can cut a really thin strip with them. But I still don't cut very straight. So I'm going to put that little guy right on there. And I still think he looks a little crooked. Maybe it's just me. But I'm going to glue him on. Now you could make this a little belly band as well and tuck something behind there. But I'm just going to glue it down. Now like we said, this is going to go on here. And I'm going to line that right up towards the bottom. And because it's a pocket, um, we're just going to glue the three we're just going to glue the three sides and I am going to make my little divot. Now I'm going to use my tab cutter um, that I showed you in uh, video one. I use it upside down so I can see where I'm cutting and I'm just going to eyeball it. it doesn't have to be perfect and I don't know if you can see what I'm doing I'm just taking a little tiny bit And then I'm going to, you know, just ink that a little bit more. I still have a little glue there. All right. And then we're going to put glue around the three sides, the left side, right side, and across the bottom. And then I'm lining that up. I'll leave a little bit at the bottom. Just going to press that down. <clears throat> and I do recommend that you keep your glue covered when you're not using it, especially if you're using one of these little um, needle nose applicators. But I do find if you lay your bottle on its side, it doesn't clog as much. I don't know. It could just be me, but that's what it seems like to me. Now we already have our flap and then we're going to just glue this here. So I'm going to put a bunch of glue on the flap. Try to get as close to the edge as I can without hoping that it doesn't squish out the sides, make a mess. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Now you don't want to go over your crease because that's where it's going to fold down. Just line that up. Make sure it folds down nicely. And I'm going to see if I can find my... little package of magnets. This will be a miracle if I find these. Oh, we're in luck. <coughs> I have a package of these little magnet discs 
they're by basic gray i absolutely love them they probably even have smaller ones these are i think what do they call them uh one thirty second as far as their thickness they're very strong and they're nice to have when you're building the book and you're going to do pages like this because this is a little on the thicker side and see that page is not um, going to lay flat unless you have something now you could use velcro I've used velcro before that works fine and then you might also want to think about putting some kind of little tab here so that the user of the book should this be a gift um, knows to pull up there that they can do some journaling and maybe put some some pictures or, or whatever here so these are the kind of things you have to think ahead uh, so you can bury your magnet which I didn't do here but I can put some kind of a flower or decoration there because like I said this was a mat that I I decided not to use and so I didn't want to waste this paper because I was so um, limited with with um, how much paper I had available so before we glue this down onto our black background that's going to go on our envelope we want to think about that magnet we want to think about the tag now this is kind of busy paper I think it's very beautiful but I also think that um, in order to do a tab maybe I should have something different that would really kind of stand out and let's just see what we have available here this is some of the plain paper that I have from a different um, graphic design um, I love this stripe so I think I'm going to use this and I think I'm going to make it just two circles rather than because I can show you that rather than um, my tab punch now like I said my punch here is sticking so I have to kind of hammer it on the table some of my equipment starting to where it needs to be replaced I apologize for that banging but now it's not gonna <laughs> not gonna let me there we go Are we having fun? <laughs> Sorry, I hope that doesn't make you crazy. But I'm going to go ahead and ink my edge. So I'm just cutting out two circles. And I'm just going to glue them back to back on the bottom of this page. And then when we go to decorate, I may put a little gem there, or a button, a little bow, a little flower, whatever. So all I'm going to do is <clears throat> add some glue. Uh, let's see. I'm going to add it towards the bottom here. And just hold it there for a few minutes. Not minutes, seconds. Look at me straightening that up. And then we're going to do the other side. put some on the top of the tab and then put some on the bottom of this tab and line them up actually if you had a little bit of that stripe sticking out the bottom that probably would be cute too All right. 
now we have to place the magnets. Now these little magnets um, are really strong and the, the problem um, that I have had with these in the past is that when I go to glue them on I have to make sure I've got the two sides that are supposed to be together together. So you've got pluses and you've got minuses. So I want a plus and a minus, uh, well, and an X and, oh, I guess it's supposed to be a plus, yeah. Of course, getting them out of the packaging, that's always, always fun. I've got other magnets here, maybe I could pull it out. Uh, it's not coming. And they do have little sticky um, stuff on the back of them. But that doesn't always stick real great. So I always add a little extra glue. Um, somewhat neurotic. So this is how I want it on. So I'm just going to peel off my, and of course these fingernails look great, but you can't really peel stuff like this off. See, and that's easy to lift that, that little glue. And I've had these a while, so I'm definitely going to add some glue to this. And then I'm just going to put that where I want. And I'm going to just put this aside because I want this to, to dry a little bit before I try to go and attach this. Because when I go to attach the um, other side of it, if it's not dry, it's just going to pull it off. So I'm going to put this page aside and let that magnet dry. I'm going to use um, my tape runner to put my black base on my pocket. And if you're just joining us, this is an ATG gun. It's got dry tape. It's double-sided inside of this gun. You just push the trigger, drag it and then release and your tape comes off onto your paper and I'm just going to make sure I've got this the right way which I'm making myself crazy with this I should have just done a square so that, that's the long side and that's the long side so, and again, I like to just touch the top because once you get this, and it touches that paper, generally you can't get it off. I'm going to press that down real good, rub off that extra glue. And you can use your bone folder too to really give that a good press so you, you get a good um, stick. All right, so we're going to put this aside for right this second. And we're going to go to our next page, which will be our summer. Still haven't decided either what I'm going to do for the center of the book. And 
And so this is going to be the summer side, the left hand side of the book. And this is the summer right hand side of the book. And what I decided is I'd like to have a page that folds out. And then a pocket underneath of that where we could slip some cards in. And I don't know what else from there. We'll just see how it goes. So again, I need to um, ink my base page. Uh, you can also add, you know, um, parchment paper, plain paper. Um, my taste has kind of changed since I started doing the altered um, journaling books. And, and so it just depends on what kind of look you want and how you want to decorate and what you want to do with your pages. But there are a lot of videos on YouTube and a lot of wonderful crafters. So you could really get tons of ideas, see what you like best. And then just once you get a basic idea of how to put a page together, you pretty much, I think, can figure out... Um, you know what you want to do and then go ahead and do it so that's going to be our base and I want to make sure I get my flowers going the right way not that it would matter a whole terrible a lot <clears throat> so I just cut this according to me like I said you know depending on the size envelope you use you kind of have to just get your own measurements so I wanted this to tuck in behind my base page. Um, so I made that a pretty tight fit. And then I took some of the summer paper, I believe. And I'm just going to put that on top like so. And then once I get that in underneath, we're going to make a pocket, add some of that lighter uh, peach color. And this could be used for journaling. So I may just stamp something on this rather than um, put any kind of decoration on it. And then on this, I think we're going to need something from the summer pack. Let's see what we have. This is summer. Oh, look how cute that is. See, that would look real cute on there. And you really don't see it too much because um, the floral pattern behind it is so busy, but we're going to put some black behind it and that's going to pop and that can be an additional little pocket for us. And we can leave the opening at the top or on the side. You know, you can decide. These are my Tim Holtz scissors and they're really cruddy. So I apologize for how cruddy they look, but they just, they're going to stay cruddy. But I have a little tiny bit but he didn't cut this exactly right. So I want to get that off and you can you can trim and get the littlest tiny piece of paper off. These scissors are amazing. He has them in a couple different sizes and I had gone to the store and thought I bought the right size because I wanted a smaller pair. I came home and had the same size. Oh, I didn't take them back because they're so wonderful. I love having two pair. All right, so I'm going to ink this, and I don't know, I think for, I don't know, I think for something different, maybe um, I'll leave the opening at the top on this one, and then we can put some kind of... Um, 
clip or streamers or ribbon or twine something to come out the top now I need to find a piece of black cardstock that'll work behind that well, that's too narrow a lot of times I just continue to cut full sheets of paper and I have tons of these black black pieces All right, so I'm going to do, I'm going to use this. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. I probably should have set a timer. But if I'm driving you crazy, you can just fast forward until we get to the next page. Oh, I did that wrong. At least I caught myself. I want to make this. Oh no, no, I'm putting it on the black. I'm good. Got myself confused there for a minute. <clears throat> we only have to do three sides on the black. <clears throat> you press that down and then we're going to cut and trim around that black, just leaving a little tiny black edge. See, it really doesn't take too long for that Mod Podge to, to stick. And it's really nice if you can have all your craft supplies in one place where you don't have to keep packing them up. I kind of took over our four-season room. Um... But it's nice to be able to be working on a project and then just be able to, especially if you have younger family and you're trying to grab a couple of minutes here and there to do your crafting. It's nice to be able to have a place uh, where you can leave your things and then just come back to it when you have a few minutes. Um, my husband... doesn't know how I can craft in such a small space but you really don't need much room I mean sometimes I craft on the kitchen counter of course my phone's ringing my dogs are howling okay so that's gonna go like that so let's start putting this together so I'm going to attach this first I'm going to trim my corners now this one's going to be hidden because I'm not using up um, an old piece of paper. This isn't glued down yet, so that's going to go like that. This is going to go here. I'm not going to make this a pocket. I'm going to glue this. I'm going to glue this straight down. Being as we're going to have a pocket on top, so I'm going to do all four corners. All four sides, I should say. I just love this paper. I think I picked this up at a um, scrapper's convention. It's so much nicer to be able to see the paper in person. I'm not sure if I inked this one. I think I did. So you can see the vibrant colors a lot of times online. They only show you a couple pages of what's in the design pack, or um, they don't show you any. You have to zoom in and kind of see the little squares across the bottom. It's really nice if you have a distributor near you where you can go and actually see the paper. Now, my paper trimmer didn't trim this off as nicely as I like. And what you can do with something like that is you can take a little um, emery board and just sand that little bit of roughness. If you have any spots that didn't quite cut, like if your uh, corner rounder didn't cut quite as nicely. And you can just sand off those edges. Alright, so 
so that goes there like that and then what did I do with my other piece mm. there it is this is going to go on top and I'm going to drop it down a little bit because we're going to have a card sticking something sticking out the top and so this we're going to do the four sides again using my Mod Podge I have a hard time saying Mod Podge freaky okay so we're just going to hold that down for a few seconds I have to say I like the way this is turning out And then we're going to go ahead and this is going to open out. So we're going to go ahead and glue this down. So we'll add some glue here. And again, you're going to be careful of that fold. sure I like the way my flowers are going or that they fit on here correctly so it's got to be this way and I'm right-handed so I have to kind of like I say with the glue you do have a little bit of time so that's gonna fold over okay give that a little bit of a press it's always a good idea too to have some uh, baby wipes available especially if you're doing any kind of inking or mixed media it's good to have them handy I just buy the cheap ones at Walmart. Don't have to worry about them irritating anybody's butt, you know? All right. This is going to go on here. I'm not going to use the magnet here. This looks like it's going to close pretty nicely. And if we put any kind of a button or something on here, that'll kind of we'll weigh that down a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my tape gun to adhere this page. And there's a learning curve to this too. You want to try to get as close to that edge as you can. You can always add a little bit of glue if you need to. But you could buy a smaller one and practice before you invest in the big one. See if you like it. And I'm just going to eyeball this and drop it in. Press it down real good. And I do have a little bit of this glue. I got really close to the edge, but see, like I said, you just rub that with your finger and that comes right off. It's really cool, really, when you think about it. All right. Then this is going to go on top of here. And I'm going to use my wet glue. I'm not going to make an additional pocket, so I'm just going to glue all the way around the edge, the outside edge. And then just line it up as best I can. And you don't really have to mash this down either, so your glue squishes out. I guess I tend to be a masher. But it's going to dry clear. 
got a little bit of it seeping out over here. The thing about the baby wipe is it doesn't stick because it's wet. If you use a tissue or a paper towel to clean that up, it's going to stick and make fuzzies. And as my granddaughter would say, not dud, not dud, Amma, not dud. Okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to put this. Now, I don't want this um, sticking out, which, I mean, really, you could. That doesn't look bad. But then, to me, you have wasted space back here. So, I've decided I'm going to put this back here. And now that that's back there, that isn't going to lay as neatly as I thought. And it's really not any better if I put it up further. Plus, this is the center of your book, so it might be hard if you get it too close to pull cards in and out. So, let's just see if I use the magnet, if it's strong enough to go through all those um, layers. Let's, let's do a test here. So, I've got a positive and a negative. So that means if I put this under here, yeah, that's strong enough. So let's go ahead and use a magnet. So Take off your little paper dot. You're going to center it there. I didn't add extra glue. I'm going to mark this just with a pencil line so I know where to glue it. Trust me, I've had issues in the past. <laughs> I'm going to put that underneath. I'm going to add a little glue this time. I'm thinking about it. Oh, I got it going the wrong way. Sorry, right, we're going to go like that, and I'll have the sticky part up. Because that's going to go on our envelope. Now, I just got to make sure I have the right envelope. This can get very confusing, folks. Very confusing. So, I need... This is summer. It's going to go this way. And this is going to be... Summer is going to be this way. And then it's a center fold. So this is part of my center. Where's my other... Oh, I know. I put it here. So this is my... 
correct envelope. You have to be an engineer. Okay. So what I'm going to do is make sure I have this going in the right direction. Which is that way. So I'm going to put my glue and my tape on. Gosh, I guess I should get a clock. I mean, I have time on the computer, but I didn't look at what time it was when we started. I thought about maybe trying to live stream a project here and there, but I'm not sure if I would be good at that. There's so many things you have to keep an eye on. Okay, so I'm just going to very carefully touch down. And I can't talk when I do this. And I give it a good rub. some of that extra glue there and you can see a little white from my envelope but um, I don't want to trim it there because I don't want that to come apart it's on the bottom I'll just put some more ink on that I have to trim off a little bit there all right <clears throat> Now we need to put our inside pocket in. So I'm just going to give myself just a little bit of space here, just really um, for looks, instead of mashing it up right against there. I think it looks better with a little bit of a space. And I have a little bit of wiggle room there, um, so it's not hanging out here. You know, down the road I might put a little strip of something, but I love that paper. You really could journal right on top of that, really. So I'm going to do three sides of my glue. And I should show you, when you watch different people that stream, I watch a gal by the name of Dee Dee Willingham. She mostly colors and she does um, mixed media art kind of collage kind of amazing stuff. She, oh, she's amazing. So she's on YouTube. Uh, but she streams live and uh, does all kinds of projects for about three or four hours. She does, um, she comes on around, well, she comes on a little early, but she streams from nine till about noon. And um, she does a lot of really cool stuff and she gives you a lot of um, really cool ideas and tips. And my Mod Podge is getting a little empty here. And I'm going to show you what she does. Which, of course, I stole the idea. All right, now, how cute is that, huh? So this is our summer spread. Cool, right? I'm going to put that aside because I'm going to come back to spring but let me fill up my glue here she uses I'm gonna have a crash sorry kids she uses an empty just soap dispenser um, that she can easily fill glue or she's a big user of the uh, golden matte medium uh, for the um, decoupage not decoupage she calls it reverse collage projects and whatnot that she does and um, it's very similar to Mod Podge 
it's white, clears, it dries clear, but look at this. Look how easy this is. And you just take this and just squeeze it in your container. A little tiny bottle. I had a friend say to me, what do you do? Use a funnel? I'm like, girlfriend, do this. So there's a tip for you. Now we got that all loaded up. All right, so now we're back to this guy. And I need to find my right page that this is to be attached to, which could be interesting. So this is our, string, our spring page, and this is our right-hand side. And I need to discover where I put my uh, that would be the back of our that would be the back of the summer. So when we flip it over, we've got we've got spring, and then we flip it open, we've got summer. So. I've got to put my magnet um, on here. So let's do kind of the same thing. I want to take my magnet and see where it attaches. So that's the spot. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to see pencil there. So I'm just putting a little marker mark around that magnet so I know where to put my glue. And then I'm going to take my little paper dot off, add my glue. What time is it? Oh, the mailman's here. Girls are going crazy. All right, and then this has to get attached to here, so I'm going to use my tape runner. I should have marked my edges of my black paper, so I know exactly which way to stick my page, but that would be too smart, right? All right, so this is the way it needs to go on this way. This is throwing me off because it looks like an unfinished edge, which it is. And for some reason that doesn't look like fitting the way I thought that it should fit. Oh, I see because it's the, yeah, okay, I got, I got it, I got it, kids. I don't think we're going to get to the binding today on this video. We're watching my daughter's dog. They had a baby not that long ago, and um, the dog's nervous around small children, and they're doing construction, and oh my gosh, she's a barking maniac. Okay, so that's what we have for, our, for spring. Closes like that, and then this is our summer. Inside cover, front page, spring, a mat slides in here. This lifts up, 
we're going to put something here to cover that magnet although really it doesn't look that bad we've got a pocket down here and then we flip over to summer and there'll be a mat that goes in here and then this flips open and another pocket and room to journal and uh, I might just leave those maggots maggots sorry magnets show might do um, something to journal on on this page I think I'm going to call it quits uh, for today because I think I've had you here a little too long already um, the next video will do um, uh, autumn and fall and then uh, we'll go from there. If you found this interesting, please um, give me a like or thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time when we uh, continue our Graphic 45 Seasons Memory Journal. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.